ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, crypto nerds of all ages, you know who I am. I'm the at real Monty Allen, and I am your crypto nerd. And today we've got Mercury Labs in the house. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Welcome to the show. Absolutely. Thank you for having us, Monty. Absolutely. Thank so we've you, got sir. Christopher and John Henry here. So we've got we've got dual founders here, and I think there's actually a, a couple of founders, right? Like we didn't get the whole group here. Yeah, that's correct. There's actually four founders in the team, and Chris and I are actually brothers, and we actually happen to be both both going to be a co CEO. So that's exciting. That is fantastic. All right. So we've uh, who wants to take the con here? I I, I want to see like give us a little bit of background on yourselves, and then maybe we'll we'll talk about the company. Okay, so just a quick background on me. My name is John Henry Brownstead. Uh, I'm a military brat. Uh, I went to Tarleton State for college. I have three business degrees. Currently, my day job is I'm in the Army. I jump out of airplanes. That's the kind of cool thing about me. And cool. I love sports, and I enjoy sports gambling. Excellent. All right, me too. All right, what about you, Christopher? What's your story? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I went to the same college he did at Tarleton. Um, I have a bachelor's in computer science. I've got my MBA and I just graduated with my master's in educational administration. So okay. currently right now, what I got is I'm a high school teacher teaching geometry in Fort Worth. Got it. Wait, you're in Fort Worth? Yeah. I didn't know that. I'm in Dallas, man. We got to have, we got to have like a, a live <laughs> interaction. My live studio is in Fort Worth, as a matter of fact, South South, well, South Fort Worth. What part of Dallas anytime, are you I'll at, say this. You've probably seen my car on the highway at one point or another. All right. Well, we're going to have to talk about that because there sounds like a story there. Uh, I have two offices here, one in Uptown Dallas and one near um, Panther Creek Park out in Fort Worth. Awesome. Uh, I actually went to high school in Liberty Frisco. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So Frisco, McKinney and Allen, like quite used to that area. Excellent. All right. Well, well, uh, we didn't mean to record this whole thing, but that was just live there. We didn't realize like we're, we're right next to each other practically. Uh, so excellent. We're going to have to have more of these events. In fact, we've got a few more events um, scheduled with the Crypto Nerd team in Dallas. We'll have to make sure you, you get an invite. So we've got uh, some Algorand get togethers with uh, I think Al Oracle's coming, uh, some of the headline guys. So um, let, let's talk about you, though. So the company, how long have you had this idea? uh to incorporate blockchain sports betting how, how, like how, when did those two worlds collide for you so the business started rough, roughly around november 21st of 2021 so we're just a bit over two months old mm -hmm. uh the idea came about probably a year and a half to some change and chris actually i've had this idea for a while and chris came along and actually made it a reality pretty much okay so chris so you what, just had the know-how yeah. or what so what I did was um, I studied, figured out, well, how could we incorporate this onto a blockchain? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we're dealing with such mass volumes of participators and trying to figure out how do we can do these transactions fast and efficient, mm -hmm. Ethereum was out and then obviously Bitcoin. So I did some digging and I, I discovered Algorand and I thought Algorand would be the perfect blockchain to host this platform. Absolutely. It's it's fast, it's efficient, it's cheap, um, and it's secure, right? Which is Absolutely. something when when you're talking about custody or or I don't know if you're 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 holding custody of any of the, the algos here, we can talk about that. But anytime you're dealing with somebody's funds, whether or not it's fiat or crypto or whatever it is, you want to make sure that um, everything is secure there and it's gonna move along quickly. Um, you've got uh, some oracles you you wanna bring in to keep track of scores, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit. So why don't you just tell the audience what it is that Mercury Labs is going to bring to market? Okay. So what Mercury Labs is planning on doing is incorporating two different kinds of sports gambling. One is going to be traditional where it's going to be money line spread over under the usual. The second portion is going to be fantasy based to where you can enter into a gambling pool to where you and up to maybe 999 other participants in mm -hmm. Algorand actually come together and say, hey, you have your set lineup, you have your set salary, whoever creates the best lineup based off the amount of points accumulated from the from the entrant details mm -hmm. will come into play. Highest, whoever accumulates the highest points will win and so forth. All right, fantastic. So. Are those two different phases? I imagine that the over-under is pretty easy to implement. The fantasy aspect sounds a little tougher. 
Correct. What, what kind of time frame are we looking at there? So um, our time frame is uh, completely dependent on the oracles that we utilize. Um, currently, the traditional betting standards are what the oracle is going to be able to feed us. So the the fantasy aspect is a is a long term goal. We're hoping mm -hmm. that maybe sometime mid 2023, but our current focus is the traditional standards. Okay, got it. Now, you're, you're, you, you both are very well educated, right? So you've got a lot Thank of, you. a lot, a lot of degrees. You got an MBA, you got, you got a lot of business, um, 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 you know, book smarts there. How has that played out in the real world for you so far going through this process of starting up? Anything surprise you drastically in starting up a blockchain company? From my point of view, it's actually, the education's been fantastic, but experiences will trump anything else in my opinion and that comes to any profession and anything new that you you attempted on doing um i think the business aspect is where it helps you with the thought process and what people could be thinking so you can understand your consumers and your demographic but aside that a lot of it's just been ojt and experiences and lessons learned from my perspective excellent and i have to agree with them too because um with my mba studies you learn about how to manage teams and do the most efficient you know procedures and same thing applies with the masters in education administration too i have i, I could go be a principal if i wanted to but i i want to i want to do a bigger impact so we'll talk about that later but the point is my educational is kind of i want to say it's given me a way to see how to implement different strategies my brother here he comes with a military background sees how structure and procedure is implemented well, mm -hmm. I come with more of a civilian lifestyle that can kind of integrate both standards to make it successful. Okay, excellent. And you've got two other founders. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about them. Uh, you know, what kind of roles do they play in, in the company? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll handle the first one and I'll let my brother handle the second one. So the first one, the one who provided that list of questions and information for you, that's my mm -hmm. wife. Uh, she's a licensed nurse. So she has a lot of organizational skills and formats and things that help us maintain our timelines and things like that. Excellent. Second person is Brad Rozo. Uh, he's our chief marketing officer and he is a silent professional and he has been the biggest help to us ever. Uh, he's just a remarkable person you should get to know, honestly. It's been a pleasure having him on board and the way that he structures his marketing ideas and putting it into action, as you'll see as we get towards the ICO, it's going to be outstanding. All right. Fantastic. So I have found that groups who have uh, founders who have defined roles have a much higher success ratio. And I think of this almost like Wizard of Oz. Right. So John Henry's like the, the, the lion, Christopher's the, uh, right, 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 right. You, you might be the, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're the, the tin man, make it the tin man. He's the tin man <laughs> right. Right. So, so, uh, your, your wife, maybe she's, she's got the nurse background. Maybe she's Dorothy, a very empathetic type of, uh, <laughs> uh, a philosophy there. And the other guys, uh, the other guy must be the tin man, right. Cause he sounds like he's got uh, the analytics or something. I don't know. Um, but, but it sounds like, you've got those roles defined and even though you all wear different hats i'm sure it helps to have somebody to bounce ideas off of and help keep each other accountable um what kind of um growth plans do you have growing outside of these four folks how, how many is anybody else involved at this point yet we have two other people outside of the original four uh, but once the ico happens and we have a lot more funding we plan on expanding the team to what it should be Excellent. I, I like it. Um, let's talk about your ICO plans for a minute. Um, so you've got a white paper out. It's a fantastic white paper. Thank I will you. make sure that we link it there. It's got a ton of information in it. Um, and it's all very well organized. Um, but you seem to have a couple of um, uh, stages for ICOs. Is that the right way? Do you use uh, phases or stages? I or would ICO say number phases. One? Okay. So you've got a couple of phases for the ICO and your layout for that, your plan looks a little different from what I've seen in the past, specifically, um, you know, uh, uh, you don't have guardian uh, guidelines against um, maybe like a, like whales or somebody coming in early on. Right. Yeah. So, so walk us through that process and there's pros and cons for you know, all of these choices. And as business owners, we all kind of have to make those choices. What brought you to this one and why was that the right choice for you? Well, a lot of people ask, why don't we do whale protection or KYC? And 
Um, mm -hmm. Like my brother mentioned, it's it comes down to funding. As a startup, we have to pick and choose where our funding goes. And so we're going to raise our team capital with the first ICO. That will give us access to money to hire more developers, more, um, I want to say programming features and things like that that will enable us to succeed. The mm -hmm. second ICO is to help us stabilize the liquidity pool because we all understand liquidity pools all about how other people can pull out and affect, you know, person B over here. Yeah. And as a gambling platform, we don't want, you know, user A to pull out 1000 Algorand and then person B is left with a lesser amount of his portion of the winnings. Mm -hmm. So first one's primarily focused for team funding. The second one is entirely for the liquidity pool stabilization. And the third one is we're, we're honestly on a fence about it. It just kind of depends on the success of the team at that point. Mm, got it. So the ICOs for you are a way of bootstrap fundraising. So you're not looking for outside VC money, borderless capital, Arrington, or, you know, those kinds of folks. Um, not to say you wouldn't give away their money or take push their money away, but right now you want to retain control of the entity of the corporation or whatever. Exactly. You said it yes. perfectly. It's just keeping it in-house as much as we can. Got and it. if you look at our toponomics, we have a percentage set for, you know, team members. Mm -hmm. So it's not, we're not against it, but we're trying to keep as much as we can within. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Um, so functionality, um, what sports are you going to go live with first? Basketball? Okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah, basketball, actually. Okay. Um, we're planning on launching our initial platform in the fall, hoping, you know, a mid October with the NBA tip off. Uh -huh. But, you know, if our platform feels like we're ready to go before then, you know, football, mm -hmm. but right now we're focused on basketball and okay. my brother, he has, uh, another sport he likes to talk about. So once we focus on the top three in American sports and then migrate to soccer, I actually have tried to do my own research to where I was thinking, why can we not implement cricket betting as cricket's the second most viewed sport in the world Worldwide. as well as, yeah. right. And let alone like the people that love cricket actually are huge fans of crypto. So mm -hmm. I kind of want to incorporate combining the two to where we can actually have more users into Al Grant, let alone Mercury Labs. Yeah, I think that's very, very forward thinking of you uh, because you're not going to have all U.S. based um, consumers. Correct. So um, when you when you think about the the rollout there, are we looking at, um, I don't know, another six months to get everything rolled out or, uh, you know, how soon before you get one up and running? Do you think it'll take to get the other sports up and running? Well, that's it's dependent on the Oracle and it shouldn't be that hard. If we're, you know, established in one sport, that means the Oracle is able to read certain box scores and things like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it all it's all based on the Oracle. I know it's a cop out answer. I'm sorry, but that, that's OK. That's OK. So um, Oracle's are a, a topic of hot debate in the Algorand community because there aren't enough of them right now. There's not enough that are providing information. That's um, correct. Uh, now I'm familiar a little bit with um, the allegorical team. I interviewed them not too long ago. Have you have you spoken to them? Have you been in contact? Are, are you you're working with them? Yeah, I see I see some smiles. Yes, uh, I actually talked on an interview with Abdul Osman, the CEO of Algorical. Okay. And by the way, I enjoyed that interview between you two. It was a really good uh, opportunity to watch you guys like talk and actually learn the processes of what an Oracle does. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I'm trying to actually secure a partnership with them with abdul and ryan his marketing guru yeah. um but it, it looks like it's being postured for it to happen but again more details to follow and right. i'm sure if it does happen there will be an official announcement we'll keep our fingers crossed for you because i think that would be a good a good match and um ryan's not too far away from us i think he's also in north texas somewhere around here too um so um we've got uh oracles coming we've got a you know a, a sport already picked out so how much work and what do you need to accomplish in the next six months? Uh, well, the first like? thing we need to do is focus on smart contracts. So, you know, we need to be able to enable the smart contracts to pull in money, allocate percentages based on the winnings. And just that's the first, 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 uh, first thought. The second one is, you know, ensuring that the, our platform is going to be able to read the Oracle. Mm -hmm. 
And those are the first two concerns we have. The, the rest is just front end, you know, user interface issues, but right. that shouldn't be too bad. And okay. the other thing to add on to that too is feasibility and how easy it is to use our application. How easy will it be to wear? Because again, we're trying to bring people that love sports into crypto and people that love crypto into sports. So that being said, we need to make it as easy and as consumer friendly as possible to where people want to give this a shot. Yeah, you got to break down that barrier of, of resistance. I like your thought process there. Um, all right, uh, let's talk about marketing. So obviously okay. you've got you've got the swag, you've you've got uh, you've got uh, the design down. I love the like what is that uh, Hermes, the wings on the foot kind of a thing. That is um, the wing foot. Yes, okay. it is. Indeed. So I mean, is that a sports reference somehow? Why, why Mercury? I mean, you're you, you I mean you're not named Mercury, uh, neither one of you. So I mean, where did that name come from? So. Technically speaking, sports did start in Athens, Greece, actually mm. specifically in Olympia. Okay. Uh, that being said, the Greek god of athletes were was actually Hermes, and the Roman equivalent to that is actually Mercury. So the first planet in the solar uh. system is actually Mercury, which is Hermes. <laughs> uh, and then also to another fun fact about Mercury is it's actually the Roman god of commerce. So it's actually combining sports and commerce, which is the thought process of naming this project. That's the best of both worlds. Okay, so you love it when your business acumen and your passion uh, get to get to merge together in, into one world. Right. Uh, that's that's perfect. Okay, so uh, how do you how do you plan on on you know growing the user base initially? Um, have you thought about um, you know do you have an advertising budget? Are you hoping that the ICO will gain enough users that they will all the users who buy in? will be, you know, your first, you know, beta testers or users, or do you have some, you know, some incentives for folks to, you know, join in early? What's your, what's your plan to get those initial users in? Okay, so um, <laughs> we're actually going to start our uh, advertising campaign this week, since the Great. ICO is the end of this month. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on the timing of this video, that could be the launch. Okay. But I plan on being in California with our head of marketing at the um, Champs Memorabilia me if I'm wrong, Show. Yeah. Champs Memorabilia Show. It's okay. in the same city as the Super Bowl. So it's going to be great. There's gonna it's be actually going to be uh, two streets away. Really? Oh, that's yeah, going to be, gonna be mayhem. Okay. Yeah. It's going to be an opportunity. And we're going to have a lot of athletes. And um, we're going to, our booth is going to be right at the door. So people are going to see us as they walk in, and they're going to see us as they walk out. Okay. And we're going to be giving a little uh, poker chips with our logo and a QR code that takes them to the website. Okay. Also, too, Chris Chris has been talking with the team on doing an airdrop here and there early as, uh, as compared to later, and I think mm -hmm. that's going to pay dividends down the road. Another thing we're going to do in terms of marketing, too, is already we're attempting to reach out to pro athletes to where, hey – you know, like what would it take for you to actually be it not only post on your social media, but actually be a valued member of the team. So those talks are going on as well within their respected sports. That's so fantastic. we're, we're, we're trying to actually do small steps, medium steps and large steps to where we actually have a full set out plan. Mm -hmm. You got a three pronged uh, effort there to keep moving forward. I, I like it. Exactly. Um, now, when we talk about um, you know uh, marketing like that, and you're talking about the oh, shoot pro pro sports players, um, bringing people on the platform in a, a relatively short order, there, uh, you're going to get some comparisons, I think, to Smilecoin. Um, now, it, you probably saw this one coming, right? Because Smilecoin is the only other player that's really in that kind of uh, in that world of sports betting. How are yep. you different? Um, and you know, uh, being you, you know politically correct, I guess. Let, let's just like I you know highlight a few differences between what you're doing and what they're doing. Well, <laughs> the best way I could say is, if you really want to see the difference, look at the white paper. You can see what our quality is versus theirs. And right. as far as um, marketing, I haven't seen any. Um, I've heard of them, but I haven't seen anything run on Reddit. I haven't seen on Discord or any kind of social media. So unless you're following them on like, maybe Twitter, I guess, um, I wouldn't even know they exist unless you brought them up. Yeah, I think the biggest splash they did, um, and they they did they did make a splash with this. Uh, they sponsored a NASCAR um, 
Uh, I think that a like, co-sponsor or something. So they had there was a Smile Coin car, and I forget which race last year. Um, Are they that doing was sort car of, racing? That was sort of their their splurge, I guess. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't know if uh, you could bet on that particular race or not, um, but that was pr- sort of the biggest marketing splurge I think that they did. Um, but it's just interesting that. Um, you know your 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 white paper compared to theirs is there are some stark contrasts there uh, to be sure all right um so let's get out of the crypto world then so do you see yourselves compared to you know a, a draft kings or the new what is it the mgm stuff or yes that's okay. part of it okay. um we want to be much larger than just that but that's where it starts Got and it. i'm very and i'm actually very happy you said that because uh for comparison draft kings they from what I've researched, they actually take 10% for each gambling pool. We're trying to emulate nine to nine and a half percent to where we're already trying to be cheaper than them as well. Hmm. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I think DraftKings, uh, those sorts of um, um, uh, programs or apps, really, uh, now that uh, most states allow it, uh, have really taken off, I've noticed, in the last two to three years. I don't know what the total amount is. I think I saw it on your white paper, actually, you know, what the total sports betting was. How, how, how much is bet? annually what's that number it's got to be huge the, right? it's about 200 billion dollars it's a 200 exactly. billion dollar market i think it's even more than that that's probably what, what the government knows about um <laughs> right uh and and i don't know when you bring something on blockchain are there some significant benefits while doing it this way versus what a DraftKings does regardless of the the price the 10 percent why is blockchain it would be a, a mindset because you know when you're using uh DraftKings, you're, you're using dollars so mm-hmm. you know you're counting the dollars but if you're using crypto you know you're not really tracking that that's just a number so you know people are more likely to participate like oh you know i ran out of dollars at a casino but i still yeah. have bitcoin over here or ethereum over here that i could possibly swap also so, too sorry, what, one, that's top one, secret what yeah also one thing to add on to is again like we're looking towards a demographic demographic of people outside the us as well to mm-hmm. where outside of VPN capabilities, like, hey, we want to interest people over in East Asia. We want to interest people over by Africa and Niger and South Africa and and, and Pakistan, actually. So I, I think this is just more ease of operability for it. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, you know, if you got your overseas markets, um, local markets here, and specifically, we'll bring it back to Algorand, there's a fairly big push for esports in the community, right? Yieldy's got their partnership. Um, Algorand has Zone. their drone. Zone is coming up, right? Um, are there any plans to incorporate, you know, that, you know, betting on on those types of events? Is that a thing? Eventually, yes. And I want to tell you everything, but at this time, I just can't. I'm oh, sorry. You oh. just got to stay tuned and be a part of the ride so you can know everything we got in store. All right. All right. Well, I'm glad I asked that question then. Yeah. So at least I got the, uh, the the rebuttal there. All right. Um, so what haven't I asked you about that you guys feel like, hey, we, let's get this out to the community. Let's make sure that they, um, you know, they know what's going on with Mercury and, um, you know, uh, you know, what, what haven't we touched on yet? I would say another thing, too, is just how amazing the community has been towards us thus far. And as we get closer towards the ICO, I just see the community growing, ever longing at that point. And uh chris if you can could you please expand on like your actual uh experience with the algorand community oh god uh so i started trading algorand last year when they had those nice passive uh aprs for Mm. just holding it yeah and i participated in governance and you know then the asa market started booming in october and november and uh Mm -hmm. i pulled everything out and went straight into akita oh okay all right <laughs> everything wow yeah, that um, bold bold move awesome. very uh if you go on discord you'll see my name whale number three yeah or okay. uh, chris's venom two i mean i am the guy with the uh akita license plate oh that's awesome okay well next next time i see i'm gonna flash my lights at you so uh so i mean what are their after they did the yieldly pools, uh, what do they, they like five X, six X, seven X. What, what do they do? Like after the yieldly pools? And I don't even know what they did before that, but it was, it was already pretty good. So what I can't, <laughs> they, I can't really talk about what they do. They, they hint a lot of things, but nothing's confidential. 
They yeah. have a uh, top secret things going on in the background. Um, someone went in the background and found out it's something to do with smart contracts and mm-hmm. uh, the word that's been loosely around was staking or something like that. Yes, but I know their Akita Kennel Club. Uh, mm-hmm. Their NFT line's been really fire. I mean, they've made a ton of money if you've been tracking that in the span of like three weeks yes they sure have and they're, they're really well done too uh i think yeah. the most important thing they've done is build a community so oh, it's interesting it. that you said hey what talk to me about the algorand community and they are a, a group that's done a very good job of building up a, an active community um and really kind of you know rabid fans um right you know as far as the, the project this, goes it it's it's uh the community itself is we've and me included, we get together with a small group of people and we've created a few essays. We've got a few that created their own NFT line. Like we're all very supportive. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we just love each other. And it, I can honestly say it's because Akita brought us together. It brings in outsiders and shows them how easy Alcarand is, how easy it is to swap and use a DEX. Yeah. It's been incredible, especially for first timers. Yeah. It's it's relatively like a, you know, the barrier to entry is pretty low there. You know, the website's all, you know, colorful. The buttons are very well laid out. It takes you directly where you need to go. Here's what you do need to swap. Here's the link to Tiny Man. Um, it's pretty well laid out. Plus all their their um, uh, their NFT stuff is is fun and engaging too. Oh, yeah. So, uh, also, and they were, they, they were smart with that. I know you're going to NFT too. lines. I've seen yours. Yes, I have an NFT line as well. I got to take a page out of the Akita book. <laughs> as you should. But no, uh, as, as I was going to the, uh, add on, uh, one thing, too, that we've looked into is, um, are you familiar with the sports trading card world at all? At, excuse me. Are you familiar with the sports card trading world at all, Monty? Um, not in depth, other than, you know, I know it exists. Yes. Right. So not only is it big as ever, mm-hmm. uh, one cool thing about it is um, what they do is there's a sports term called razzing. So what happens is there's a super rare car, card out there. And like, hey, I need 100 people to participate in this raffle. I need $10 each person. There are cards that go for 10000 plus. Now, right. where this comes into Mercury Labs is that's 100 transactions within PayPal that will actually set it back longer than it should as compared to us attempting down the road to do that to where it'll take seconds for the razzing and the raffle to actually take place sooner rather than later. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Then that's another part of the demographic as well to where like we're doing our best to actually include people that have no crypto experience at all, but to where it makes their lives Mm -hmm. as consumers in the sports trading card world much easier as well. Yeah, I'm surprised nobody has, um, you know, uh, NFT to, you know, cards or, or, or fractional ownership of some of those more expensive cards, that sort of thing. I bet that's in the future somewhere. It will be in the future. Um, they uh, Panini already tried to do that with their digital blockchain cards. It's not been a huge success yet because the people that love sports trading cards just they want to actually the physical. physically hold it. Yes, yeah. I think as we yeah. transition towards the future, hopefully we're a part of it to where we can provide more sense on why it makes more sense to go the digital platform versus physical. Okay, good stuff. All right. Um, so there's so much to absorb here. I hope that you guys will come back on the show and you know keep us updated as milestones uh, become unleashed, as uh, you know your ICO goes live, as maybe you find some information about our oracles and there's that partnership maybe that gets announced. Um, feel free to, to to shoot me a DM and I'll have you guys back on. Um, and you know, last question that I usually end with here is, hey. I know you guys got your head down. You're you're looking at your project. You are you know really kind of laser beam focused a bunch of the time. But what else gets you excited in the Outground ecosystem right now? What projects are, are you guys watching? Go ahead, John. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, Algorical. I'm excited for Abdul and Ryan and the rest yeah. of his team. Algomint. Uh huh. Very excited for Algomint. Bullish uh, on Algomint. Yes, yes, I agree. Uh, Algo patties. You know who doesn't love a good cheeseburger? Yes. And uh, Planet Watch. Plan to watch it. Okay, uh, so I I missed out. I missed out on ordering um, uh, the the first edition of like the Planet Watchers, like the you know the um, uh, the monitors, and they were like on back order or something. I need to get one of those so I can I can participate there um, in a, in a more meaningful way. All right, um, Christopher, what what about you? Uh, I mean, I've already said about Akita. That's that is my fangirl uh, ASA. Um, yeah. Algo Patties, like he said. Uh, I know their NFT lines fixing to launch. Um, sometime next week, I believe. Yeah. Um, 
Algo Acid's one I like. They have a bunny NFT line they're putting out soon. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, Defly. That's the yeah. that's the next hot thing. It feels like. Yeah, I I, I like those. Um, uh, Defly is uh, kind of taking the world by storm. It seems like uh, it'll oh. be interesting to watch them kind of uh, yeah. grow. That's All right, I got lucky to be in the ICO for that thing. <laughs> Did you? I missed. I, that's another thing I missed out on. I it was to, like an hour. It was like like that. It was it was Boom. gone. I heard, I think it was faster than an hour. Honestly, I got I, I got know lucky. How. I was in a COVID waiting line in my car, and I was like, "Oh, hey, when's the ICO? Oh, snap!" It just and happened I to be right then, and it closed in like twenty minutes. Yeah, that's another one that uh, ended up uh, a lot for a lot of folks. All right. Well, um, great. Thanks again for joining here, and we're going to have you on again here shortly. Stick around Thank after you. the break, and uh, I'll have uh, some questions here for you offline. Thank you, Monty. We. Really